The upcoming off-the-cuff theater production is called The Gin Game. That's written by D.L. Coburn. It was actually a Pulitzer Prize winning play in 1978. The Gin Game at first seems to be a, it's a deceptively simple looking play. It takes place in an old folks home and it is um, a conversation between two older people, a man and a woman, um, in this uh, old folks home. And, and as they get to know each other, they get to know each other over the game of gin. So while they play gin, we as the audience start to understand more of their lives. And, uh, and again, what seems to be a deceptively simple, the game seems to be simple, their relationship seems to be simple, very quickly uh, more things are revealed and, um, and the layers get peeled away. The challenges with a, with a two-hander is initially you would think, will there be enough action to sustain the audience's interest? And yet, um, uh, the nature of this play, uh, there's so much that comes out um, about human nature, about aging, about isolation, the desire for connection, and the, the facade that we may present to the public and, and how that can get peeled away and, and through these characters it gets revealed as the play goes on. It relates to a card game, but it's not about a card game at all. It's about the game of life. That's what this play is about. Ups and downs and, and winning and losing and, and, and everything that goes along with trying to just survive in this world. And that is what every day is all about. And I, I found it very relatable in my own life. And so as we work through this, in my opinion, simple but complex script, I find so many things that kind of go light bulb, light bulb. I know what that's about. I've lived that. And I'm not the age of these people. I may look it today, but I'm not. <laughs> it's called acting. It's been practically a whole week since I have seen you to talk to. Oh, since I met my Waterloo at Gin. That was fun. <laughs> oh, perhaps you'll grant me a rematch this afternoon. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Listen to them in there. Every visitor's day, it's bedlam around here. Thank God they don't come out here. No, every once in a while, one of them, one or two of them will stumble out here. Last week, Gladys May's daughter and son-in-law brought her out here on the porch. Isn't that a tribe? Oh, they didn't have the children with them. But they talk so loud, mm -hmm. like the old lady's deaf. Hell, there's nothing wrong with her hearing. When she's out here alone, she tells me to stop making so much noise shuffling the cards. <laughs> and she's thin as a rail. Oh, they brought a sandwich out here for her, wanted to get her to eat it. And she won't eat a bite. I don't know how she keeps alive. Uh, they brought a coloring book out, too. They wanted her to occupy herself. Poor soul. She just sits to the window all day. No, Coloring would give her something to do. No, she'd have no part of it. And then they started talking about me. Oh, like I wasn't even there. Like I was a piece of the furniture or something. And they, and they talk so loud. And at one point she, she turns and, uh, to me and says, See that nice old man over there amuses himself playing cards. I looked at her, and she says in that loud voice, Don't we, sir? What did you say? I didn't answer. I was dumbfounded. Here's this woman defining my life, or so she thinks she is, in one sentence. And I'm supposed to agree with her. That nice old man amuses himself playing cards. I don't think she was talking about you, Weller. I think she was just trying to show Gladys that there's more to do than just stare out that window. Why well, use me as a model retiree, for Christ's sake? But she's not talking about your life, Weller. My God, look at all the things you've done. It's when she's defining my life the way it is now. I'm still alive, damn it. Well, I should hope to tell you. <laughs> People don't, won't have to think about the play. They won't have to um, try and figure stuff out uh, because it's basically given to them, but it's, it, it's these people's story and, and people will relate to it, especially about old age and in what we, this was written in 77 and we're still dealing with the same issues in old age, if not even more so. And now that there's a lot more elderly people 
it's a real predominant factor in life right now. Um, and I think it's pretty timely, and it's, uh, and it's just beautifully written, you know, it's a Pulitzer Prize winner, and yeah. So the Gin Game is running at the Capitol Theatre in Nelson, and it runs March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Two shows on the 24th, the matinee at 2. The other shows are all at 7.30, and you can buy tickets both at the Capitol and also on their website online.